And now I think it's probably time or overtime already. I'm, I'm eating into Simon's time. We can get started. Um, we're going to chat about stories from the manufacturing sector. And we're going to uh, hear from GSK, from Simon. We're going to then hear from um, Custom Air Products. And we'll then hear from Regal Beloit. So without further ado, I want to welcome Simon Owen from GSK, who's come here all the way from uh, London or UK, right? Yep, UK. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for being here, Simon. Thanks, Samir. And take it away. Thank yeah. you. So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to tell you a bit of a story on how we've built capability in GSK around the power platform. So we're relatively new to this. Um, we've only been using it the last six to nine months. So, so what we've tried to do is take a little bit of a different approach than we would have done usually in a big global enterprise. So I'll give you a bit of background. So I work for GSK. For those that don't know, uh, we're a global healthcare company. There's three main parts to the business. Um, so as you see on the screen, we've got vaccines, we've got a consumer health business, and we've got a pharma business. And I work within the pharma business. And in the top there, you can see where I work. So that's the wear factory. And we do some pretty cool stuff there. So we make some medicines that really change lives. So we make HIV medicines, we make cancer medicines, and we make respiratory disease medicines. So we're, we're changing lives every single day. As well as creating stuff that goes out to general patients, we also work with the R&D organization. <coughs> um, we develop those medicines hand in hand with those guys, and we scale them up, and we're used to new te technologies as well. So taking on new tools should be quite easy to us. But in a, our mindset is usually quite different. So we've tried to take a different approach this time. Now, this is me, background. So at the moment, I work in the IT organization, and I have done for the last eight years or so. Prior to that, I was part of the business. So I was a production operator. I ran a shift. I played around with the master data behind our systems. I drove some process improvement. So I can see the problems that we had in rolling some of this stuff out, some of the opportunities that the tools could deliver for us. Now, GSK Rangers, so um, some of the branding around that uh, is a bit of a problem from a copyright perspective, but we used a, a, a team name that we've uh, abbreviated to the GSK Rangers around this. So how did it come apart? So we had these wonderful new tools available to us. We, we've started to change our mindset. So rather than deliver these great big IT projects, we've started to think in a more lean startup way and take an agile approach. So delivering something very small, working with the customers, getting feedback, improving it, and iteratively growing it and delivering more value as we go. And the third bit was really around inspiration from some of these technologies technology companies who work this way all the time. So it's the Facebooks, the Spotify's, the Instagrams. And Spotify was a really cool one. So they give their staff about 10% of their work in time to do something innovative. So work in a different way. They identify something that they think their customers can, can get value from, something that will be quite cool. And they're pretty much free to work in that framework. But there's one, one kind of provision, one provision around that. So rather than work under the radar, they're encouraged to bring everything forward, and they share with the rest of their colleagues what they're doing. They get feedback, they learn from each other, and then they improve. And some of these things will get into, into the product and released, and other things will just get killed, but they'll have taken the knowledge from it. So within GSK, we don't work that way usually. So my hypothesis was really around, well, how can I bring those three things together? And very quickly, pull together a small team, start learning in that very small way with very little overhead, and then just grow it and grow the value. Is it something that could work in our environment? So this is how I tested it. So people from across the site, not, not IT guys, not tech guys, but real people doing real jobs from all of the functions across the site. I just brought them together. We had a scheduled weekly session where we would talk about what we were learning, talking about what we were doing, talking about how we were using the tools, and start sharing those things and look for other opportunities on how to grow these things. And my role within that, it wasn't to, to kind of drive the direction necessarily at this stage. It was this servant leadership thing. So we would come, a, come across problems together. My job was to try and unblock that and make it as easy for those citizens developers to do the things that they wanted to do. Most important thing, I think, was that last piece. 
they kept coming back time and time again because we were having fun. We were learning, and it was a, a more innovative environment we could work together in. I'm not going to go through the detail of this one, but it gives you a flavor for the type of people who are part of that, that ranger group. So all kind of different stages of their career. Got uh, people who have been there 20 years, people who have been there less than a year. All over the company, they're, uh, they're coming together. And what you'll also see is that group has grown. So we started at our factory. We started working in that way. We used Workplace to share some of our stories, share some of what we were delivering. But that group started to grow outside of our team. So very, very quickly, we've, we've seen over the last six to nine months, we were, yesterday, we went over the 600 person group. Um, so across pharma, across vaccines, across consumer health, We've now got people sharing their stories. We've got people raising their problems and somebody from a different part of the organization. And one of the 48 countries that we've now got people working on these tools in, solving each other's problems. So really, really exciting. Now this is, um, I'm going to show you a couple of, uh, couple of examples on how our knowledge and our capability have grown over that time. So first of all, Power BI one. So as a group, we came together. Somebody from the business came and gave us some data. They had an idea of the kind of insights that they wanted to gain from it, but they didn't know how. So within that session, we had a very hectic, very loud, very energetic um, session where we looked at the data, we categorized it, we, we analyzed the sentiment in it, and we came out with a report that we could publish and the business could consume in a way that they would never have been able to do before. We took those learnings and started to formalize it. And then we had a one-day hackathon. So we looked at a different data set on how do we manage the activities that we need to do, make it more transparent, make it easier for us to understand our performance. <coughs> and again, published it to the site. Started sharing it with some leader, senior leadership teams. And then just lift and drop. So try and get as much value out of these things as possible. So repurpose it for a different data set. Get the same value, but in a different, uh, different area. And then we'll take those learnings back in. We'll continuously improve. And the same is true across our Power Apps journey. So this is an app about safety. It's about identifying that maybe there's a trip hazard or I might fall off the stage. So I go out, I take a photo, I give it a description, I categorize it. I say, well, what's the likelihood of me doing that? And what could the impact be? We start gathering that data. And rather than in the paper process that we were doing it through before, all of a sudden, we've got instant data that we can start collecting and sharing with a wider group of people. So there was a similar process. So again, we, we tried to reuse. We lifted, we dropped, re, we repointed, we adjusted the app for the new process. And we tested that with a small group of users. We then got that feedback. We iterated it into version 2. And very different look and feel, very different interface but essentially the same data structure largely underneath. And what we'll do is we'll take those learnings back in. So we've got a standard look and feel for how, how people across the organization start to use these things. So were we successful? So a lot of that early work was pretty much under the radar. It felt like the right thing to do. It felt like there was some real opportunity, some real value. So I, I just kind of went out there and did it. Now, as we started releasing things, <coughs> It got to a stage where we were actually deploying things into the business. We were making a difference. And I guess the telling point was when our, our VP, our site director, came to me. He gathered us together in a room, and, and he gave us that message. So he'd heard about what we'd done. He recognized us as adding value and making a difference to his business. And he actually issued us with some challenges for some of the top site pro problems across the organization. And the key thing that he pulled out is that bottom, bottom uh, <coughs> sentence there. So he recognized that the reason that we were successful is that we did it in a non-standard way. We just went out there. We tested these things very small and very quickly. And once it started delivering value, then it was the right time to share. So some of the learnings we've got there, so um, GSK expectations down the left there, teamwork, accountability, development, and courage. I would say the two biggest ones that I would pull out from that, it's really around the mindset and the willingness to just go out there and do some of this stuff. Just go out and try it, start it small. These tools are so flexible that we can just try it with very little effort, very little waste. 
Now, something really exciting has happened um, across that global uh, expansion of the community as well. So, as well as having all those virtual people, we've now got people who are mirroring what we've done at WARE and setting up their own physical team within those, those parts of the organization, working in the same, same model that we've tried and tested and proven. So in North Carolina, we've got a factory um, who have got a group. We've got another group in Melbourne, Australia, who have started. And this morning, I, I woke up to a workplace post from uh, our site in Pakistan, who have also started their own uh, ranger group. And so that, that fills me with, uh, with joy, really. So we've got a great opportunity to use those guys and girls to then say, well, let's develop something once. Let's share it through those communities. And let's very, very quickly try and roll these things out across the organization in a very, uh, very accelerated way. So try and deliver value as quickly as possible. So that's where we got to so far. So I'm hoping the next year or so, we'll continue to see growth and we'll certainly see uh, more value. We're certainly seeing a lot of senior visibility now. So <coughs> one key thing, uh, last Tuesday, so the president of that farmer organization, he came to where? Uh, he brought some of his leadership team. He brought some of his key talent. And within his agenda for that, that very busy afternoon, I had an hour to talk to him about Power Rangers and that group about Power Rangers and actually run a, a Dragon's Den, or I think it's Shark Tank over, over here, on three of those things that I've just shown you. And we got sponsorship from that highest level of the organization to then take this model and try and deploy those things further. So there's some real exciting stuff happening and some great opportunity. Thank you. Before, uh, before I let you go, and let me make sure my mic, is my mic on? No. no. Is it on now? It is, okay. So a couple of questions. One is, could you describe looking at this, um, what was your process? Like, was there something, what did you do to go from just being maybe one red dot there to a few more red dots and then arrows that go you know, globally across the ocean? So it's, it's largely been organic, if I'm honest. It, it, it wasn't planned at, at that early stage. Uh, we didn't have an intent. We didn't know even if the wear group would be successful. So it's really by sharing what you're doing and showing how it can apply to so many people that they recognize, well, if, if he can do it, if they can do it, well, I can probably do it as well. So they start to pull it and try it themselves because there's so little to lose by, by just exploring what you can do with these tools. Yeah. Now, there's some more examples you can share with us of like the types of Power BI dashboards or Power Apps or flows that, uh, that this group of people have created? Yeah, so, so I guess a big one that we're, we're just in development of is so it's quite a complex factory, and we make the tabletin products, HIV and oncology medicines, and we've got the respiratory products. And it's very difficult. There's multiple stages within that, and visibility of where batches are within that, that operation is quite tricky. Um, so using SAP data, we're extracting that. We're, we're trying to visualize each of those stages and just allowing the business to connect well, I've got incoming materials, it goes through these steps, and I need to be able to ship it at this point in time. Some of those take longer, some of them take less, but knowing the connection between when we want to ship it and where that is in the process and whether we're on target, it's really focusing people to look at those batches which are taking longer than, than maybe they should do and making sure that we either hit that date or we're actually starting to see that we're, we're delivering things quicker than expected, so our cycle time is dropping quite rapidly. So lots of opportunity. That's excellent. Yeah, and so I want to put on um, three or four persona hats and ask you a couple of questions, sure. if that's all right. right. So one is, let's start on one side. What if I was sort of an end user in your organization? I don't build apps. I don't never plan to build them. But I'm going to be consuming what you and the Rangers and IT and other folks uh, build. Yep. Um, how might my life change in some ways with the platform and how might it get confusing? Do, you know, in the past I went to IT and looked for things, now there are these rangers out there, what, like, what, would, what would I do? Yeah, so, so I guess we haven't quite reached the confusing stage yeah. yet. 
Um, but where we've got these points of contact throughout the business in each of the functions, that's, that's kind of simplifying things. So people know the, the person in their function who they work with. They've already got a relationship with them. They're already feeling quite open to be able to share their ideas and look for opportunities. So we're seeing those people come, come forward because uh, they're seeing us deliver things and make a difference in, in how they do some of these other tasks. Yeah. So and, and then you spoke a bit about the, the, the makers and the creators. What about, and a bit up about your leadership, what about the sort of your IT, core IT, infrastructure IT? How do they view the work that your team is doing and the community that you're driving? So it's, it's early days, so I think, I think they're watching with excitement at the moment. So if I think of my senior leader within the IT organization, we, we talk pretty regularly, and, and she's been really excited with what we're doing. She's talking about it with, with a lot of excitement about how her business colleagues. And I think now we're at that kind of tipping point. So I've heard a few sessions around governance and, and how sites can, or organizations set themselves up. And I think we're at that stage where we need to just put a little bit of a framework around it to help people do what they need to do and enable them to, to develop. Um, but also give them the support that when things reach some of those, those bigger sizes or bigger levels of criticality, that we've got the right kind of support model around it as well to make sure that it doesn't fall over and it doesn't actually it negatively impact their lives. Cool. I have one more uh, thing to say, which I don't know if I'm supposed to say it or not, but there was, uh, Simon was apparently scheduled to be in the keynote uh, yesterday morning. Uh, I know we were running behind on time, so we'll have to have Simon back for another uh, larger venue, but, but hopefully we gave you a venue, not quite the keynote, but you <laughs> shared it. So you, uh, perhaps an applause that might be as big as the 4,000 people. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Simon. Yep. Cheers. Okay. You can do questions at the end, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah do you want to just let people know? And we'll do, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I think we had some hands raised. So we'll do questions at the end. So we want to make sure we get through the presentations, and then people can take a few questions. Uh, next, so we've gone from GSK, which is this large multinational global company. Uh, let's go down to a 200-person custom HVAC manufacturing firm in Texas. Uh, I'd like to invite up B. Amaya and Rebecca Sackett to share a bit about their story from Custom Air Products. Oh. And B, Amaya, thank you for being here again. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your power platform, power apps, flow, power BI journey, uh, and what you're doing now and doing next, and might see a demo as well from Rebecca. Yeah. Take it away, thank you. We're, we're you can just click next, next, yep. or if you want me to click, I yep. can click. Yep. Uh, happy to do it. Let me give you a... Yep, something to speak with. There we go. <laughs> All right. Nice and easy. Yeah. I'll make my part quick because hers is what's cool. Yeah. Um, so customer products, yeah, we're little. It's so funny to watch all these big things about, you know, you know I, no, that's not us. So our IT department is here today. He's right there. <laughs> uh, Rebecca works now in the IT department. I'm sorry, there's two of them. So uh, I am the uh, systems analyst department. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of the way we are. Our people wear tools and work out in the shop. Um, the apps that we roll out are not, oh, this is cool, let's try. No, dude, you have to do this. You know, so we have a, a whole different thing. So we have three divisions in our um, company. We are located at a single site in Houston. We ship all over the world, but we have, uh, th sorry, three primary divisions. So uh, our, our biggest one is uh, the design and construction of uh, industrial and commercial HVAC units. Uh, we also do some servicing and we also do some field installation of that. And that's, that's us, that's what we do. Um, a year and a half ago, we decided it was not cool that everybody in the company had a different version of uh, Excel. You know, it was hard for us to share things. So we have only recently um, come to own the Office 365, and then we thought, well, it would be cool for us to uh, figure out what SharePoint is. That looks interesting, yeah. So we have SharePoint. It's not organized well. It's not, you know, we don't have our hands around it yet, but uh, by golly, it's there. And um, uh, we 
I clicked on a button, you know, like somebody else said, and I uh, thought, well, Power Apps, that looks cool. My very first one, I, I built a Power App that linked into our financial software. There's no SAP where we are. Uh, it is Great Plains, and it's like this uh, SQL background that's just messy, messy. No, anyway, pulled it all in so the guy could walk up to a unit and pull it up and see how many hours had been worked, how much money had been spent, how much ahead or behind he was of that, uh, and just loved it. Uh, and that was the only app I built. Because we realized that you know we were developing, growing, whatever, and I knew somebody. I knew somebody that had worked for me in the past. Uh, it's kind of cool, kind of smart, smart kid. Uh, and I thought, you know, w there's no job opening, but I really think she would be great in a position w that we could use uh, as we're developing things. And I wonder what she would do with Power Apps. It was not my primary. But anyway, so Rebecca's my daughter. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I homeschooled her, so I knew kind of what her capabilities were more than a lot of parents do. Uh, and over the years, she has taken over and done some projects for me with other companies. Um, we did database work, and when I went to work overseas, I turned it over to her, and she still does that for uh, ExxonMobil. And it's an old access database that they refuse to let go of because they love it so much, but it is what it is. So she came on board, and uh, we started her off and said, we don't know what we're going to do with you. Uh, I, we, she, she couldn't work for me. I'm mom. That doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> she works for Ryan, which is great because Ryan's six next door to me. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, so, so Ryan starts her off and says, okay, we have this thing. We have units that sit out uh, in our manufacturing process, and we tie on these plastic containers and slip documents in them. As they go through their quality checks, people reach over and pull that thing out, um, you know, <coughs> sign off on it, stuff it back in there or not, a lot of times not, and send it on its way. Can you help us with that? And so Rebecca came on and said, yeah, let's try Power Apps. Oh my gosh, you'll have to see this. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so as she said, I uh, really didn't have a whole lot of experience with uh, writing code or anything like that. I'd used Access, I knew how to do stuff there, but I started using Power Apps maybe right at a year ago, and uh, I just, I really poked around in there. I went and watched videos and looked at some of the templates, kind of picked the code apart and just kind of played with it. I was lucky enough that Ryan um, really let me kind of just go on it. He really just was like, do this project, figure out where it'll be good. We looked at a couple, you know, we looked at doing it access, we looked at doing it in Power Apps and decided Power Apps was the way to go and I just, played around with it, and it's really grown into a big project. So it originally started with just some simple checklists, but it's the more data you get in there, data that you're not used to having, the more stuff that you're like, well, what about this? Well, what about this? So at first it was just simple checklists, but then it's like, well, we can also include who's doing it, and then we can also see how long it's sitting there so that we can see what our lead times are. So it's really grown into a big project. Were there any more slides? Oh, so this is uh, one of the screens here. So this is kind of listing all the apps that are tied to this one project. So it's all the Traveler app, but what I did was I did multiple apps because a lot of people don't need to see everything. So for example, in electrical, the only stuff that they see are the units that are assigned to them right now and what they need to do. So everything kind of runs off of a to-do list. And so there's a few that need to see. Uh, everybody in the organization has access to the view one because if anybody walks up to a unit and notices that something's not right, they can pull it up on there, see who the PM is. They can report an issue, take a photo, submit it. It'll get emailed. Uh, our people are still really big on email notifications. We've been trying to deter from it a little, but for now they like it, it works, it lets them know right away. Um, so a lot of the emails are just real simple, like, you need to look at this, and then it, we just send them to the app to go look there. Uh, and then the audit one is one that I actually use, so about, what, once a month, maybe twice a month, I'll do an audit. So I'll dump the stuff that's in there, and I'll pull it up on my iPad and get my safety glasses, and I go walk around and see if units are where they show in the system. 
Some of this is so that I can go slap hands, but some of it is sometimes we figure out there's just stuff we didn't think about. Uh, we had some stuff with control panels where they were putting them in there, but then they just they don't have the same process. It's totally different. So we you know we've had to adapt and change whenever we figure out that there's certain things that we need to do differently. We modify it and go you know I like going out in the shop sometimes watching the guys do it if I notice he's having to push the button two or three times I'll ask him you know you want me to make the button bigger or you know there when I test I test the same way so I like to watch other people test it anytime that I can uh, I'm gonna see a demo yeah You're let's see the demo I'm better yeah, at that. let's yeah. see it actually work let's do okay. it switch it over you can keep that down if you want if this oh, yeah. thing Oh, let's not turn it off. Is it showing? Sorry, one second here. Six, six, I think. There we go. Oh. So this is listing all the apps. I just made a simple app that links to it, so y'all don't have to watch me open stuff over and over. Um, so this is listing all the different apps. So um, what's talking about on the checklist, some of them are as simple as a checklist. So like electrical, they do theirs from their phone. They're in the shop. These are guys who are not super great at technology, but they can manage to do this just fine. So uh, they look at the items that are to do. And the way that this works is when the PM puts it in, he puts in what the steps should be. And that's what, so it's always automatically changing off of what they've clicked. So nobody's having to go in there and manually do this. So they'll see what is assigned to them. They can see the details of the equipment, and whenever they go to do the check, they just do all this right there from their phone, and it just goes through the checklist. So they used to have this information on paper. I don't know that it's any quicker to fill it out in here, but the main benefit to it is that this information, we can pull so many reports off of it. If they put no, they can put what the reason is, and we can go back later and run reports and say, you know, every time that they're checking a unit the first time that they try to check it this is missing we need to do better and they just kind of go through with all of their different questions and just answer them and then when they're done they submit it so when they submit it and they say that I'm done it emails the guy in QC and he knows that he needs to go to the unit and he needs to go confirm so he can see what they filled out and he can check it so everybody's just kind of working off their own app some are built for a computer, some are built for a phone, some are built for an iPad. The management, they all like to use their iPads because they go do checks a lot of times in the morning. We, we call it the duck walk. And it's basically the owner and everybody else is following like a bunch of little ducks with their iPads, <laughs> which is why it's called the duck walk. And they all follow him around and everybody's got their iPads and checking to see if it's, everything's what it's supposed to be. So uh, for the PMs, it's great because they can pull this up at any time. We have uh, six buildings, so they can kind of see where their equipment is without having to walk all over the place trying to find it. I also pulled in some calendars. All this information I store in SharePoint. Um, I like it there. I make sure that whenever it's done, it archives so that my list doesn't get unruly. So whenever a unit ships, it archives. But this is all calendar view, and this is not pulling out of Outlook. This is actually pulling data from a SharePoint list into a calendar view so that they can track the information like that. So they put this date in, and it just pulls it in there for them. Um, and there's some, they have to schedule their testing. So they look at one where it's got like 10 days where they can look ahead to see. We know how many guys we have. We know how many hours are available, and they can see um, what's already scheduled to kind of see if maybe they need to change the steps on their unit or do something different. And then they can view all the checklists as it goes. They can actually, let's see if I can get it open here, view the checklist and see, you know, who, uh, who signed off on it, when they signed off on it. So here's just an example. On this unit, the PM, he put in that he needed to go to paint and then electrical one which is our first half, and then uh, electrical final, and back to paint, and then testing. And then this unit's been released to ship. And um, you can see here it's tracking the dates for him if he wants to see how long it took for it to go from one point to the next. They can uh, report an issue at any time if there's something wrong that they need to let somebody know about. Uh, put in shipping notes. And then here's where they can actually view the checklist. That one didn't go to fab, so. 
they can actually view the checklist. They can see what the guy said. Did he say yes? Did he say no? Did he say it was factory? You can see who filled it out and what date he marked it as complete. So if somebody walks up and they see it's wrong, they can go to whoever did it and ask them for the information. I uh, also have a flow that runs and it generates this test report. We kind of talked about that yesterday. But um, it's uh, the PM puts it in and then engineering puts in the design specs and then it gets tested. And when all of that is done, it generates a flow and puts that report here because we actually print this and ship it with our units. So it's just, it's a lot of information, but it's, it's all information that, um, like I said, it's grown. It started out with just a checklist, but there's just, a lot of times when you don't have stuff in place, you don't think about all the things you could do. I mean, there's some times where we just have to tell them, like, no, you know, <laughs> enough. Because they, you know, nobody wants it, and then it's like, oh, I didn't realize you could do that. What about this? Well, what about this? And they kind of start going with it. And we've had both. We've had some people that are struggling to use it and some that love it. And uh, I've noticed that um, they have a love-hate relationship with the fact that you can see everything with SharePoint. So on one hand, you know, they're, they're over here griping, but then it's like, you know, such and such said that, you know, this was already assigned to me, but I haven't seen it. When, when was it done? I know you can tell. So, you know, they want me to pull up and tell them the exact time so that they can go back and look at it. Um, so we've had to go through a lot of training with them getting used to it, but for the most part, it's been really handy. Uh, it's turned into a big project, and the information that we've gotten from it already has just been really awesome. Uh, it's really hard to say uh, how much it's changed because before there was nothing. It was scanned documents in a folder somewhere. And now we have all this data that we can put into Power BI. We can analyze and pick apart and all that. So we, we're just now kind of really figuring out what we can do with it. So yeah. it's been really exciting. Can you share a little bit about your learning journey? Like you said, you started off, you, you weren't quite an app developer. Oh, definitely not. Uh, so I was very comfortable with Access. I'd used it quite a bit. And uh, Power Apps, uh, I would say for that first two weeks, I was like, I will never get this. It's totally different. But I started really realizing it was a lot of the same concepts, but just different terminology. Uh, I still set up my data a lot like I would in Access because it's what I'm used to. So like these are all SharePoint lists that have, uh, there's like 15 SharePoint lists for this data. And they all have, like you would do a key in Access, so they all have a field that ties them together. And as long as they're referred to in the app, it, it runs just fine. Um, same with Flow. It's not near as picky as Access, so you just can compare it. So. Uh, it took some while, and there was a lot of stuff at first. I didn't try to just go way out there. I, I was fine with just doing form submittals and just keeping it simple. I was probably four or five apps in before I ever tried doing, like, patch or collection. And even now, I, I use it when I have to. I, I don't use it for every single app. If I'm trying to put a bunch of data into a gallery or something, then I'll use patch. But if I can just do something simple, I do. I, I, don't, I don't feel the need to overcomplicate it when you don't have to. So. Yeah. And then these were some visuals that we had uh, next, right? What, what are we looking at here? So yeah, these are the guys, <laughs> part of the duck walk. So uh, <laughs> you can see they're all lined up with their glasses and their iPads, waiting to be asked and hoping they got the information right. Um, and it, it's just nice to see that we, we can do it across. We also have one on the right hand corner that actually is set on timers and it flips through the data and shows up on the shop to show them what's assigned and the good thing about it is that every time it comes to a new screen it's refreshing so the guys can see up there on the shop what's assigned to them and it's real time so if it flips through and two seconds later Johnny over here clicked off that he did it the next time it comes back around it's off the list so they're always working off of a real list where before they had an Excel spreadsheet that was manually being updated by somebody whenever they felt like it. So it's, um, it's nice to have all this live data at everybody's hands that they're not used to, so. And then you had, uh, you want to summarize a few key things in terms of learning? Oh yeah, but... so um, I definitely, the first one is my biggest one, is the uh, it can't be done should be interpreted as we haven't figured it out yet. When I was first beginning, I went on the uh, community platform a lot, which I still do. I love going on there. 
But I cannot tell you how many times I would see people put on their, oh, you can't do that. And that is rarely true. I'm the type of person that I take that as a challenge. If I see somebody say they can't do it, that's my weekend is going to figure out how to do it. <laughs> so um, there's just been so much stuff that, you know, people just haven't figured it out. It's constantly changing. It's constantly growing. So I would say definitely do not get discouraged just because you want to do something and somebody said you can't do it. Try it anyway because you might figure it out. Uh, the next one is ta talking to managers only is not great. Uh, managers have great input. They're going to tell you what you want that final result to be, but nine times out of ten, they don't know specifically what those guys are doing. So it's really, really good to go to the person who's going to be doing it and get as much information. I always like to go directly to my users if I can. Oh, and once you figure something out, make good notes. Definitely, definitely. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone to look up how to do something and found myself answering the question somewhere. And um, yeah, so notes are very important. I did not start out with that and then had to go back and start doing notes, which double worked myself. So if you figure out how to do something, even if it's stuff that you're going to use all the time, I still have read on note uh, written on note cards, like what order I do my sort and filter and search. I just if sometimes I just forget. It's just easier to have a little reference spot whenever you can't remember how to do stuff. So definitely make good notes for yourself. Thanks. And just in the, in the interest of time, the next one, I'll keep it up there, but I think you've spoken to a lot of these points um, already. So folks can get, uh, get a quick snapshot. And then thank you again, okay. uh, Rebecca, for being here and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay, so next, our third presenter, I'd like to welcome Vivek Bhavishi, who's a marketing manager at Regal Belloid. Uh, he, I think, has another identity as well, which he might uh, speak a little bit, uh, little bit about today. Okay, take it away, Vivek. Thanks, Thanks. for being here. Can everybody hear me? Fine? Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Um, actually, let's go back to the thing. Uh, not bad. So something about myself, uh, that's my beautiful champ card that Samin made for me, uh, <laughs> and a bunch of us are all, all here. So I'm Vivek Bhavishi, uh, marketing manager at Regal Beloit. Uh, I like to call myself as somebody who drives digital transformation. Um, I've been using Power Apps and Flow for the past two years, and I, I just did a check. Uh, like The first app that I published was exactly two years from now, <laughs> like two years back. So uh, it's just a nice memory. Uh, yeah, no formal background in coding. Uh, I heard somebody, Rebecca, you were talking about using HTML, starting with HTML, forced to learn HTML. But I was forced to start it, but then I, I started from there and did access and all this stuff all through online forums. Uh, so I have no background in coding as such. And the identity which uh, Samir was talking about Power Addict, I have a badge on that. A lot of people in the conference here must have seen with the Power Addict's badge. It's, it's just a community who loves talking about Power Platform, and uh, we love kind of getting people on the platform and make them rise, uh, uplift them. I'm also business applications MVP, um, and the YouTube, and I, if you see, I didn't put in LinkedIn because I'm like, this is my identity. The Power Addict identity is the one which I kind of relate to more. Uh, so I tweet a lot about Power Platform stuff, even before some of the Microsoft guys. <laughs> uh, we, I make some videos as well. Uh, all right, uh, so coming to Regal Beloit. Um, so Regal Beloit is a $3.6 $3 billion company. Um, this was a 2018 sale, so it's a pretty big company all over the world. Um, we mainly make uh, electrical motors, but we also have power transmission products, uh, like gearing, uh, gearing boxes, bearings, and all that stuff. Um, around 24,000 employees, global manufacturing. And this kind of graph just shows you where all we are having our business. OK, so why power apps? Uh, the first time I, I, I was listening to a podcast, and they said Microsoft just launched power apps. I was like, OK, cool, let me. 
I was driving back to home. Um, I, I went home even though I generally don't want to open my work laptop. I was like, let me open it. Uh, see, I opened Office. I saw Power Apps icon. I was like, OK, let's click. And then, I mean, that's the story. I'm two years from there. I'm here right now. Uh, so yeah, it was included in an Office 365 license. Didn't have to ask ID for anything. Just started building apps. Um, it was easy to make. I describe it as PowerPoint plus Excel plus something else as well. And you can create a Power App. Um, and also, it was easy integration with all our existing services. We also use Dynamics CRM, so that was an added benefit for us from a licensing standpoint. So I never have any licensing questions because we have the P2 license. Uh, and yeah, security as well. Uh, so th this kind of talks about Regal's message. We focus on decreasing our footprint, carbon footprint, and increasing our handprint, making innovative products. So that's what Power Apps kind of related to. We were developing apps for our field sales team um, to showcase our energy savings and um, increase our handprint by kind of showcasing the new products that we are developing and uh, creating Power Apps for that so that guys can go to the customers and showcase our apps. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the Power Apps journey, uh, as I said, June 2017, the first Power App that we built was just duplicating uh, a huge display that we had in a trade show. Uh, one of the sales guy asked me, can we have it in my small app and which I can just, on my phone, which I can go to a customer and just showcase it because trade show is for two days. My work is for the, the, <laughs> the whole year. So I need it on my phone. So we're like, okay, let's, let's not go to an, uh, a company which builds offline apps for $5,000, $10,000. <laughs> It's open Office 365 Power Apps, just build it. And this app was built within a week and, and deployed and promoted everything. We had a webinar. Everything was done within a week's time. Uh, and that was pretty, I mean, that was what kind of made it go more from there. Uh, December, we made some more apps. Our focus mainly was towards like, how to help our field sales and marketing teams. So on the right-hand side, you see like a Regal Connect app that was at a trade show. You can just pull in the app, um, search for, put in a zip code, search for the salesperson over there, and just click a button and send the contact card by email to the customer and uh, contact cards of anyone you want to send along with it. So the customer doesn't even need to save it or anything. They just open the file, save it on their phone. Going a bit uh, kind of parallel to the journey, so Jan 2018, I got invited to the Power Apps Champions program. I just saw this email from Audrey. Um, so I was like, oh, what is this? How, were they tracking me all the time? <laughs> uh, but it was cool. Yes. I mean, uh, <laughs> 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 it was like, ooh, but OK, cool. <laughs> uh, so I got invited to the Champions uh, community. Um, it, it's been a great journey on that. And at the same time, I started my YouTube channel as well. Uh, it started with uh, Flow coming up with a feature where you can send data back from Flow to Power Apps. And I went crazy on that. I was like, let me connect to different APIs. And I made some random movie recommenders and uh, a bunch of weird APIs that I connected to and sent data back to Power Apps. So that's how my YouTube journey started, if anyone is even interested badly in that. <laughs> uh, then we created a cost saving. This was a more complex app. It had more, uh, we, need, we had some calculations that we need to do. So this app uh, helped doing those calculations of cost savings and then send it to the customer. We'll talk about that in the next uh, minute. So I'm, if you see, I'm going kind of parallel. So it's kind of everything went together, uh, my kind of journey in my company, and at the same time, journey with the community. Um, and so Power Addicts, the movement started me with Keith and Louisa and some other folks in this room as well. We just started hanging out on YouTube as a live uh, hangout. And then it ain't just, now it's just self-propagating. Everybody is just tagging themselves as a power addict, and uh, everybody's helping each other. And uh, so that's, that's about the community. Mm. 
Uh, March 2019, I got uh, business applications MVP. Uh, it was pretty good feeling that time. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, all about the community. Nothing changed after that. It's like, it's just the badge that you get, but everything else keeps on going the same way. So I, I do a lot of, I, I do blog posts, videos, Twitter. But yeah, that's, uh, it, it was a good achievement that uh, kind of uh, helped me do more for the community, if not less. And uh, I just, so moving on to the, uh, the different apps that we created. I already showed you something, but I'll just talk a bit in detail. Um, so before Power Apps, we were using a very weird-looking Excel sheet where there were hundreds of inputs. Uh, nothing was working exactly. Like everybody had some issues with it. And once they filled the Excel, who do I send it to? Where does it go from there? What do what feedback do I get after that? They're like, what's happening? So uh, we took this Excel, converted into a Power App, um, mm. and right now, like around 100 users are using it, around 20, 30 daily active users, and uh, SharePoint is our data source. Um, so the Power App basically, you fill in some data, you fill in some numbers over there, um, it does the calculation on the backside, shows you a proposal of uh, what all cost savings you're getting from, um, kind of using an energy efficient product. And then that proposal goes to a, a distributor who reviews it, and if they approve it, we get the, uh, like, yes, it's got approved. And then uh, for any documented cost savings that we show to our customer, we get credit for that. Credit as in, I mean, you get a better supplier ranking. And uh, I mean, it, it, it does help, like, we, earlier we were, having a bunch of, we had to create some reports, we had to spend a month on doing that. Now it's a click of a button. You can export the reports and uh, send it to our customers. Product showcase apps, uh, we have a lot of these. It's all about showing our value proposition to our customers. Uh, before we had like, uh, where is this document? Where can I find it? Can you please email me that? <laughs> uh, and, and even if you email, they're like, oh, it didn't have this document, can you send me that? So they had to, like sales teams had to contact a bunch of people around the company to get some information. OneDrive was definitely a great uh, app to use, but apparently having a Power App makes more sense rather than having a OneDrive app with all the documents. It's just like a one-stop shop. So when they're at a customer, they don't want to look at all the OneDrive folders. They just want to give an elevator pitch to our customer, literally an elevator pitch. This app can help you like in two minutes, you can tell everything about the, the product. Um, it had the video of a product, you can interchange with the competitor's product, uh, see the, any relevant documents, send it with a click of button. It done, didn't even require a good internet connection because the flow was taking care of the product, uh, the documents that being being sent. And this one is a pretty recent app uh, that we are kind of developing still, but it's uh, nearby accounts in CRM. So if people have been using Dynamics CRM, there are some extensions that you can buy and kind of see uh, the data, uh, the nearby accounts you, you. Uh, but today our users had a issue that they, they were not able to see if they're at a location, which are my customers nearby. Uh, so I was like, yeah, we can use a Canvas app, build some, uh, look up some way of de deriving a radius, uh, looked up some physics, maths kind of stuff. To uh, Keith actually gave me the, the, the formula for the radius, which I couldn't uh, Google it uh, <laughs> for some reason. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I used that formula, by the way, so yeah, Power Addict, <laughs> help me up, help the Power Addict. <laughs> got a formula within two minutes, built it in the app, and now uh, just open the app, it shows you the nearby accounts. If you see on the, the left-hand side, there's like a navigate option. If you click on that, opens Google Maps, starts directions. Uh, you click on the plus sign, creates an engagement, starts creating an engagement report, and you can fill it in. Uh, you can move the recurse, like radius, if you want to see on a longer radius, shorter radius. Didn't need any it doesn't need any API as well. You, you need API to first get lat long of all the accounts. Once you have that, 
no requirement of any API. It's all math. Uh, and it works pretty fast as well. Looking ahead, um, as I mean, Simon talked about the range of stuff. We, we want to do something. We want to adopt, we want other users to also adopt Power Apps in our company. And we have started a Yami user group. Uh, we are having monthly user group meetings now, uh, some lunch and learns as well. Um, also, we are using the Champify Power App, which is on, available on the community uh, forum. Uh, which helps kind of having a gamification of uh, learning Power Apps. So we have some videos over there. I added some videos of Shane and uh, other great YouTube uh, experts uh, who have made a lot of videos. And we are creating a guided learning path for all our users. Because every time in, if you show, like, this is a great tool, how do I use it? So we created this app for that. Um, so right now, our focus is only field sales, but uh, in this conference, we have two other people from Continuous Improvement and uh, Supply Chain attending this conference today. And um, so we, we are looking to expand uh, not just two other kind of functional uh, teams as well. And also, we are working on a framework for governance. I mean, there's a lot of great ideas from people like Manuela, um, who has been great to kind of just put it in on the community forum. Uh, I just downloaded that and started creating some kind of governance framework. And we are working with the Microsoft team as well to develop it more. That's all from my side. Thanks so Thank much, you, Vivek. Thank you. And you can stay on, stay on over here. Yeah. So thanks for sharing your story. Um, we have a couple of few minutes for to take a couple of questions. If we could have Simon and Rebecca perhaps come come up again and see if there are any questions from the audience before we wrap up in five minutes. Any questions? I know there was one there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you answered already. I just want to make sure that you have been able to replace, like I said, that I gave just five minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, um, the only thing that um, you'll have a little bit is managing the data, You'll st like queries, you know, you're used to doing just to analyze it, but you can do it in Power BI. I have some that I do in Excel. I've got one app that the guys like to work the report because they're used to, like how you can dump it and uh, access. So what I did was uh, when they click, it a flow runs and it emails them that report from the SharePoint list to uh, their email, but yes, I've replaced several access databases with SharePoint lists and Power Apps. And there's a question over there, yeah. Um, you had mentioned right at the end about the governance, and, and, and uh, to the three of you, uh, how are you, like you said you were working with Microsoft to kind of set up some governance of, of these Power Apps. Is that, because I'm in IT, so we kind of, hmm. you don't want to, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we have, uh, I can speak a little bit, and then and we've got a lot of people in the room that could actually help you. So if you stay on, uh, James Olenek runs the administration side of things from a product perspective, director of PM for administration in the Power Platform. Uh, if you want to have a chat with uh, Lad from Schlumberger as well, he spoke uh, quite a bit on that topic. There was a session this morning on called tried and tested techniques for establishing a COE, center of excellence, in your organization. So just kind of a few plugs over there. There's been, uh, there was a conversation with Chevron and Schlumberger on what they're doing, how they're managing their 10,000 active users every month, and I don't know how many hundreds of apps. So there's been quite a bit of that content, which I would certainly encourage you to, um, to, t to have a look at. And while we have these folks here, maybe anyone wants to take a stab at, uh, from your perspective, uh, around governance, management. We're sure. yeah. yeah, we're smaller. Ours are <laughs> SharePoint lists and apps, so I don't share the SharePoint list or site with them or the app with them if they don't need to be on it, and that's pretty much sums us up. I mean, we have less than 300 employees. So. Yeah, yeah we, are, we are trying right now. Uh, so as you said, you don't want to throttle it down. So two years, we don't have a framework. <laughs> Uh, but, I mean, the thing is, we are still emerging. Like, we, we have some apps. We are making a, a bunch more. We are trying and testing right now. 
but the idea is to kind of have use some best practices because a lot of people in the community have created some great ways of using the admin connectors um, to create something custom to your organization. If you want like, okay, if there are like 10 users to a Power App, it has to have, it needs to follow some kind of database uh, rules and any kind of quality checks that you need to run. So there are ways to kind of do it according to how you want to do it. Um, and I, I think all this admin in a day and all these What's workshops can help you uh, because there are tools. It's just that how do you want to implement it? It's more up to your organization. Yeah, and I guess from my perspective, uh, exactly your point, you don't want to stifle people. And with us being at the beginning of our journey, I think we recognize that we can't go too far without having a bit more framework in place, a bit more governance in place. But at the moment, we're, we're kind of generating the enthusiasm around the platform. We're understanding where it fits in our business, what kind of opportunity it can bring. So we're kind of encouraging that, that Wild West attitude, I guess, a little bit too much at the moment. But we're going to have to, to narrow that down. That's something that, that we've started talking about, actually. So we, we are seeing some duplication, because we, we operate across, I don't know how many countries. Um, what what was the hunt. question? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so the question was around, how do we get visibility of who's working on what to try and avoid duplication, so we're not creating the same apps in different places? And we are, we are seeing that. We haven't, we haven't cracked that nut yet. I guess what we're trying to do is keep that as easy as possible and just encourage people to share what they're doing at an early enough stage that you can say, oh, well, that sounds like a great idea. Rather than me do it, I'll help you do it. So try and uh, self-organize around some of those problems. We added a couple of links on your screen right now. The COE Starter Kit is a link where you can download. It's a bunch of uh, things we collected together. For somebody who wants to start with a COE, a center of excellence, these are best practices that we have found across multiple customers. We packaged it up in a zip file. So you can download that. There is a document that walks you through how to install that solution. Hopefully, that becomes a good way to learn and start you know, what a COE function should be. And then the admin in a day, there was a full day long uh, pre-day session that uh, all of the various people and the team ran uh, on Sunday. Um, all that content is available from admin in a day URL. It has presentations as well as the labs that we <coughs> went uh, walk through. So all of that is available for you to download as well. So and we, I just we, wanted to call out one more thing which you mentioned. You know, are we watching uh, when somebody oh, is yeah, using? Yeah. Thank I you. Just to <laughs> I was going to clarify thing. as well. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> from Sorry a if I so my SILA <laughs> team doesn't come yell at me. Yeah, yeah. From a GDPR standpoint, we are not allowed to understand, find the identity of any person. Even in engineering, we can see that certain apps are being used. We know the ID, but we cannot find out who it is. So the way we work around that is we provide for you know Power Apps champions, like people who are really doing a lot of activity, they're creating a lot of apps that are shared a lot. We provide, a, you know, through telemetry and through a machine learning algorithm, we provide a, a, a you know, pop-up window when they're in the maker portal to say, do you want to participate in the champions program? Some of us in the room might have got it. Um, so when you click on it, that time you accept that, yes, we, can, we have the permission to reach out to you by email. So you consent to that email, and then we get your email address and we can reach out to you. So that's how, you know, at, at some point when, that is happening through a data algorithm. It is not happening. We don't have access to who is using the app. We can still see the tenant IDs and IDs, but we cannot see the actual PII information over here. Just want to clarify. Thanks for the thanks clarification. For yeah. you, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> you, just, you just saved my job, so thank you for that. Yeah. And I, I just made, yeah, OK, go ahead. And last thing, I want to give you guys the, the paper copies of the cards that we had. So Vivek, your, uh, your Power Apps Champ card, Rebecca, and Simon. Thank, thank you, you so much again for, for being here. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>